Otherwise, it'll take, it will take a long time. All right, so in this example, you guys can see we have variables in the denominator, right? And we're solving, right? So therefore, the same, just thinking on, did on those two problems. I know this has polynomials and so forth, but all we're going to do is multiply by the LCD. But before we do that, we always want to simplify. So you guys can see I can factor this, right? What two numbers multiply to give you 3, add to give you negative 4? Oh, this is actually the same factors. But just factor that out, because what that does is that helps us out. Because if you guys remember in the last one, remember that one where all we did was we, to find the LCM, we just multiplied every single denominator, right? Well, you would not want to say your LCM is going to be x minus 1 times x minus 3 and then multiply x squared minus 4x plus 3. Can you guys see what problem that would be? Right? So factor this. So therefore, you can see, hey, guess what? These are redundant, right? They already show up. So of course, they're already in the LCM. So my LCM is just going to be x minus 1, or LCD, x minus 1 and x minus 3. Because I factor this down, and those two are there, right? So that's helpful. That's good. So always factor before you determine your LCD. Then, just like I told you before, let's multiply everything by our LCD. No. OK, so what's nice about doing that is just like I told you guys when we were simplifying, remember when we were adding and subtracting, simplifying, and all that stuff we did in this class period? We can now apply the division property. Whenever you have a term or an expression or a variable divided by itself, it goes to 1. x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 is just 1. But again, what I just said only applies when they're separated by multiplication, right? Do you guys see how those are all separated by multiplication? Yes? OK. Done. Here, the x minus 3 is divided out. So anyways, I'm left with a 2x times x minus 3. Here, I'm left with a positive x minus 1. And here, the x minus 1 is divided out, and x minus 3 is divided out. So I'm left with a 2. That's it. Huh? Cross multiply what? To do that. If you were going to apply cross multiplication, you would have to combine these. Did I show you how to add two rational expressions? Yes, but since they don't have two denominators, you would have to get common denominators, combine them, and then apply cross multiplication. But in my, in my same fact, I still would not want to do cross multiplication. That's just as much work as doing this. My main mode of thinking, whenever you guys have a rational expression, find the LCD and multiply every single term to get rid of it. Now we have an equation. Can we solve this? It might be difficult, but we can solve it, right? First, we apply distributive property. 2x squared minus 3x plus x minus 1 equals 0. I notice that this is a quadratic, right? So for us to get a quadratic, i got to get everything to, no, let's wait, it's equal to 2, right? I have to have everything equal, I have to get everything to the same side. So I'm going to subtract the 2 on both sides, and then I'm going to combine my like terms, which I get 2x squared minus 2x minus 3. 3 equals 0. Yes, good job. Negative 6x, so then that would be a negative 5x, right? Yes? OK. So ladies and gentlemen, there's a couple ways that we've discussed in this class. right? You could try to factor this. You could use the quadratic formula. right? Um, there's a lot of different ways in your phone, though. doesn't really do as much, or at least won't allow to be used in your phone. Um, but on your homework, you could definitely. Psst, that was the hint. Okay. Um, but you could use quadratic form, you could graph it, find the intercepts, and so forth. But this one looks like it should be, hopefully, quickly, easily factorable because there's only two terms that can give us 2x squared. And that's going to be 2x and x. So now, all I simply want to do is go ahead and determine what two numbers multiply. Um, to give me negative 3, that's also going to give me um, a negative 5x. So it's either 3 and 1 or 1 and 3. We know that one of them has to be positive, one of them has to be negative, though, right? Because they're multiplying to give you a negative 3. So the 3 is there or a 1 is there, or it's a 1 and a 3. And when I do my, when I calculate the inner and the outer, what I notice is if I did 2x times negative 3, that would give me a negative 6x. 
And then if I added that to 1 times x, which is 1x, that would give me 5x. So I factored it down to 2x plus 1 times x minus 3 equals 0. And then I applied the zero product property to x minus 3 equals 0. And then x equals negative 1 half and x equals 3. However, I'm still not done. Because as you guys remember, remember when we were talking about these graphs, when we were like graphing them? What's the first thing we found out with the graphs? What's the first thing we found out about the graphs? Step number one, what's the first thing we find? Vertical. Anybody, vertical asymptotes. What is the vertical asymptote? The vertical asymptote, what makes the denominator equal to 0, right? The vertical asymptote is not a part of the domain. It's that vertical line. You cannot graph it. So whenever you find your solutions, you have to make sure you go back and take your answers and make sure that they do not make your denominator equal to 0. And guess what? When I take my solution 3 and I plug it back into my equation, I'm sorry, when I take my solution 3 and I plug it back into my equation, I'm sorry, one more time. When I take my solution 3 and I plug it back into my equation, you can see that I get the denominator 0, right? So therefore, this solution is what we call extraneous. It's not actually a part of the domain. Even though it's a solution, it's not a part of the domain, right? It would actually be like an at, like it would, it's not there. It's not actually a point on the graph. So we just have negative 1 half, which does not make any of the denominators 0. OK? Wait, why would because it makes the denominator 0. Right? And remember, remember when we were graphing rational expressions? Whatever made the denominator 0 was an asymptote, right? So therefore, if this makes the denominator 0, it's not going to be a solution to the graph. Okay. Any other questions?